Hey, what's going on guys? Well, today we have a fixed blade. Told you there's some fixed blade reviews coming, and this is the first one I want to talk about. This is a uh, extreme ratio knife, and the model is the Colonel Machin, and I, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. I'll show you the uh, spelling of it. M-O-S-C-H-I-N, Machin, I think. So I'm going to go with that. Uh, pretty interesting. The, uh, the name Colonel Machin is referring to the uh, Italian Special Forces, their 9th Parachute uh, Assault Regiment. All right, it's kind of their nickname. I, I think it's either Colonel Machin or also known as Machin Hill. But uh, so this is actually a, uh, a military issued knife to those uh, those troops, um, which is pretty interesting. So historically, it has a, a pretty cool uh, interest in it as far as a collector's knife goes. Um, I'll give you a quick backstory on uh, on my experience with extreme ratio knives, and that is this right here, Goose Egg. Uh, I knew about this company ever since I first got into knives. Way back, I was, God, nine years old, I got my first knife in Boy Scouts and stuff. I'd say by by 11 years old, I started learning about, you know, Benchmade and Microtech and, you know, Spyderco and SOG and CRKT and, you know, all that kind of stuff. And, and I started branching out and learning about, you know, Kershaw. God, Kershaw, I think, was one of my first uh, companies I went nuts on and started buying all the Ken Onion stuff. And, you know, I was branching out and learning about all these new uh, companies. And extreme ratio popped up many times over the years, and I just never got around to getting one. Uh, number one, the prices were very high, so being expensive, they were up there, you know, in, in my experience with the the Microtechs, you know, and, and some of the Protex, and you know, um, some of the higher end production knives. And I just never bit the bullet on one, you know, until recently. I was thinking, you know, I've never had an extreme ratio knife. I, I mean, personally, have had like to be able to use and test. I've seen them at knife shows, you know, I've handled them briefly, but I never got to actually use one. And so the first thing that should be noted is, is this is not a survival type knife, although any, you know, inherently any military knife should have some survival capabilities, but this is a fighting knife. This is for the troops to defend themselves with. And obviously if they got lost somewhere or had to survive, they'd have a, a decent fixed blade on them as well for that purpose. But, uh, but yeah, this is my first real experience with an extreme ratio knife. I know there's a lot of mixed opinions, um, you know, as far as their, their designs go, but they're very distinctive. You cannot miss it. They, they all have kind of a theme going, and it's mostly with this, um, you know, kind of recess for your fingers. You can see in this particular case, you get two nice fingers in here, all right? It's it just, it's a, I don't know, a, a design thing that it kind of extends on pretty much older knives. It, it makes them very distinctive looking. Okay, so you can definitely tell an extreme ratio knife apart from any other knife brand ever, which is unique. It's pretty cool. So, uh, yeah, so this one again is the Colonel Machin. And uh, give you some quick specs on here 9.3 ounces, and we have a, a blade of Bowler N690, which, uh, if you're not familiar with, I've talked about it before. It's more on like the, uh, the realm of VG10, 154CM, that kind of, you know, level of. Um, uh, performance, you know, it, it came razor razor sharp. Of course, this one does have a little run of serrations They have a specific serration pattern here Zoom in or get that to focus you can see it goes large small small large But the smalls aren't that much smaller than the large So it's kind of specific to their knives. I haven't seen this exact pattern anywhere else but uh Yeah, pretty interesting um, and obviously being a little bit more versatile, having a little run of serrations. When I see serrations on a knife, I always want a big run of them because that's where I see them being extra beneficial. But I can understand on a, a military style knife, it's good to have a little little run of serrations there. Uh, if your blade does end up getting dull, the advantage of a serration pattern is those little you know nooks and crannies. They do stay sharper longer because they're not coming in contact with whatever medium you're cutting. I.e., that's why serrations in the kitchen are usually, or the serrated knives in your, your kitchen sets usually stay sharper longer because they're not coming in contact with everything, you know, especially your cutting board. But uh, anyway, um, interesting blade style on this. It's kind of a uh, modified tanto, but you, as you can see here, it drops down or slopes down to our point, okay? And then we have a uh, nice straight edge here with a very smooth transition into our straight portion of our tip. Okay, so it's more more of a Japanese style tanto than it is an American uh, style tanto. 
where the Americans, you know, obviously we have a very abrupt corner or a secondary point, whereas this is not, it's kind of rounded out. So just very interesting. Came pointy, not super, super pointy though. You could see that. That's just the kind of stock tip. I didn't do a whole lot of work on the front end on this. As far as, um, you know, different cutting chores, I use this a little bit outside with woodworking, but again, it's not a dedicated, you know, um, survival type knife. It's, it's really a fighting knife. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it came damn sharp and stayed pretty damn sharp. Uh, the Bowler N690, you know, it's pretty good stuff. I've never had any, uh, any problems with it in the past. I have had it on, you know, dedicated woods knives before as well. And it performs pretty damn good. But uh, our blade is 6.3 inches long. It's 0.25 inches thick. You can see there is a swedge here. So there's your, your quarter inch thickness right there. But there is a full swedge. It is not sharpened. It's not factory sharpened. I'm not sure if uh, some of the Special Forces guys sharpen that up or not. If this was my, you know, dedicated fighting knife, I would certainly have this double-edged, you know. But I guess that's a personal preference thing. 11.4 um, inches overall. And uh, it is full tang. There's kind of a rubber overmold on this knife. But you can see this popping out here in the bottom for your lanyard hole, which is uh, very oversized. And this has an extension piece here as well. And again, being a defensive or fighting knife, you can use this pommel for, you know, slamming into things. You can put some hurting on someone with that if you needed to. It does have a double guard here and some huge jimping right there. As far as ergonomics, I mean, it is very comfortable. It is a very hard rubber, okay, but it has just, just enough give where you can, you can really squeeze and bear down on this thing. And it is really comfortable. And you can see the cutout here, the recess. It does drop down, which is nice, so your fingers kind of lock in. You know what I mean? The bottom of my middle finger does not want to slide out. So if I hold it like this, I'm, I'm almost putting pressure downward on here, and then obviously pressure my thumb up, and it adds for a really, really nice grip. Um, but it is very comfortable. Reverse grip, same thing, just your bottom two fingers lock into that position there. Pretty interesting. Like I said, very, very unique to Extreme Ratio, having this big rectangular cutout. You can see that on pretty much all their models. All right, guys, so I put the knife back in the sheath here. I want to talk about this sheath system. I think it's pretty versatile. I really like this sheath a lot. Um, first off, you know, belt carry, very simple, all right? There's a button snap on this long strap here, all right? So you can undo the button snap, and you don't have to, uh, you know, undo your belt. You can fish this right to the back, and then through whatever these straps you want, uh, and then just, you know, snaps on the bottom here. Um, as far as these two uh, pieces right here, it comes with a separate strap for your leg. If you want to uh, fish these through and have this wrap around your upper thigh, like kind of Rambo style, this way it's it's firmly mounted against the leg. It's not going to wobble around. If you just do the, the top part and you're very active, it could swing around a little bit. Not a huge deal, but you do have the option to mount that down nice and tight. With these four different um, you know cross straps, you can mount this onto your bag any way you want, which is nice as well. Um, but there's, there's three different points of contact, basically, that are retaining this uh, knife inside of its sheath. And two of them are removable, which is fantastic. So first off, we have this big old flap on top, which covers the knife. All right, so that snaps in on the front. But if you didn't want that, it is removable. Basically, just unsnap this, and the thing just slides right off. All right, so if you didn't like that part of the sheath, that is totally removable. Then, uh, you know, that retains the knife inside. Then you have this big thick nylon strap which has a, a double button snap okay this is also just velcro so this thing just you know unvelcros and slides out if you didn't want that either and then there's actually uh, even though it's a, like a stiff nylon sheath there's a, a plastic molded insert okay so this does retain the knife as I push down here you see it actually snaps in okay so even without this strap across and the top strap it's not going to come out now, the reason I wanted to focus on this a little bit here because it's pretty cool that it obviously you snapped this shot, it's you know snapped inside the in interior part of the sheath, and then you have the flap over the top, completely sealed, and there's no way it's gonna fall out. But if you are a soldier or if you're doing a woods walk or something and you wanted to have this for a defensive option, you know, it, it, seconds matter, and obviously, you know, if something's attacking you, whether it's a person or an animal, you don't want to have to come down and unsnap this and then unsnap this and then try to get it out. But that's what's cool about this is you can remove this and this so basically you just have a standard you know kind of drop down sheath all right which i think is pretty damn cool so anyway this is a uh, it's a really cool knife i mean i really like it i, I like its historic value i like that it is a uh, italian military issued knife um it's a very high quality knife i mean most things made in italy are known for their quality 
and I can tell you it is a very high quality knife and it does perform very well. Um, but it is expensive. It's up there. Uh, I would say this is going to appeal a little bit more to the collectors than the users for two reasons. Number one, it's just, like I said, more expensive. Not everyone's going out and paying three, four hundred dollars for a fixed blade, especially one that's designed for, you know, to be a fighter. Um, more people, I think, are, are generally going to spend a little extra money on like a woods knife because maybe they have a, a more of a need for that. Not everyone has a need for a fighting style knife. Uh, as far as like woodwork, I mean, it'll get it done in a survival situation. It's okay. It's not going to excel. It's not going to be chopping trees down or, you know, making millions of feather sticks or anything like that. It's not designed for that. Um, but, you know, in a pinch, it's a good, strong quality fixed blade. And any good fixed blade could, uh, could get some stuff done as far as survival stuff is concerned. Um, but yeah, I mean, as far as price online, I saw these around 400 um, There's not a lot of retailers that sell it. I did find it uh, on Amazon. I found them on eBay as well. But as far as knife dealers, they don't, I haven't seen this exact model at a lot of uh, different knife outlets. So if you have a favorite knife dealer, it's worth checking out first. But um, I did get a, a link for their website. If you buy it directly on their website, it's actually a little bit cheaper. It's $372.95. That's what the conversion is. It's in Euro, which I don't know Euro, but I did use Google real quick to do a, a conversion. And in US, it's uh, $372.95. If you buy it directly through the, uh, the link, they also do a free laser engraving as well as uh, you get a free diamond uh, sharpener, which is cool. Just a couple little bonuses. So if you want something laser engraved on it, especially, I mean, if you're going to keep it as a collectible or if it's something, you know, you plan to have for a very long time, maybe you want to put your name on that or something. It's pretty cool, too. If you're a U.S. soldier and you like the design, you want to carry it, um, obviously getting your name on it would be good so your gear doesn't get lost or stolen or, you know, mixed up with someone else's. But, uh, yeah, pretty damn good. Um, but yeah, it's a little cheaper actually getting it directly from them. I don't know what shipping is and I don't know shipping policy. Like I said, obviously they're located in Italy, so I don't know if there's certain restrictions for certain countries or whatever. Um, but it is, it happens to be one of those cases where it's cheaper to get it directly from them. So that's what I would suggest first. But if you didn't get it directly from them, more in like the $400 range. They do make a slightly smaller version of this knife and I saw it online for about $260, $270-ish. So if you like the design, you want to kind of check it out, but you know, you want to save a little bit of money there. Maybe you want to try the, uh, the smaller one, you know, it's definitely an option, but, uh, yeah, pretty damn cool. The only marking on this knife is right here and you can see it's for the ninth, again, ninth parachute assault regiment for the, uh, Italian special forces. So pretty damn cool. I like it though. And you can see it's on both sides. I have to say, I definitely dig it. Uh, it's not a knife I'm using. Obviously, I'm not out there. I'm not a combat soldier. I'm, you know, I'm going to need a, a fighting knife. But as far as collectability, I think it's very cool. And I'm glad finally, uh, finally got a hold of an extreme ratio. I'm actually really interested in their folders. And they have a, a very interesting neck knife I like to try out. You guys know I'm such a, a big neck knife buff. So we'll see about uh, the future there. But if you guys have other extreme ratio fixed blades, specifically the folders, please let me know your opinions down below, your experiences with them. You know, it's kind of 50-50. Uh, some people love these. Some people just pass them out for other knives. But I think it's pretty damn cool. So there you go. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Again, please post your comments down below, your experience with the company and, and other models. I'd love to hear it. And uh, that's pretty much it. So thanks for watching. Hope you guys have an awesome day. And I'll see you soon with some more knife vids. Take care, guys.